Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video we're going to be making the first part of our physics engine. Now there's a lot of ways you can start with physics engine. You can start with a simulation, you can start doing some of the collision detection stuff, you can start figuring out what your different physics materials are and how that's going to work into collision response, and there's all sorts of different ways you can start. The way I'm going to start, however, is with collision. So, I'm going to implement our first collider, which is a bounding sphere. And I already went ahead and created the .h and .cpp files for this off-screen, just to save us a little bit of video time. And I also went ahead and set up the header guard word. Again, if you've done really any C++ stuff, this would be perfectly familiar to you. So, that's why I'm not showing that on-screen. So, bounding sphere. This is probably the yeah, probably the simplest collider there is, and it's also probably one of the most efficient colliders if it's well, if you can use it for what you're doing. So, this is generally a good place to start. It's simple, it's efficient, and it's easy. So, how do we define a bounding sphere? Well, all we really need are two things. We need a point for where the sphere is in 3D space, and its radius. So, I'm going to be using a vector class. I'm going to be using the one included with the 3D game engine I'm using. If you aren't using this 3D game engine, you can easily make your own vector class. There's really nothing special about this particular vector class. I'm just using it because it's here. You can also use a vector class in, say, something like, I don't know, in GLM or something. You, again, it's a vector class. You can take any vector class you want, and it should work just fine here. All we really need is just a point in 3D space. And I'm going to make it const, because we're actually not going to need to change it. And I'm going to call this M center. And, as I said, I'm also going to have a float for the radius. And I'm going to go ahead and set up a constructor and getters for these off-screen, because that's pretty mundane stuff that I don't think I need to show you. Okay, so now that we have all that set up, I can talk a little bit about what this is going to allow us to do, because I realize I haven't said much about that just yet. The bounding sphere is going to, of course, be our representation of a sphere within our physics engine. So this is what spheres look like to our physics engine. And of course, we can use this to represent spheres if we happen to have anything as a perfect sphere. We can use it to approximate objects as spheres. So, for example, if I have a planet, like the Earth, the Earth isn't perfectly spherical, but generally it's close enough that a sphere's a good enough approximation, so maybe I can use this to represent the Earth, for instance. And it can also be used for a few other things, which I'll talk about when we get a little bit more into things. For now, though, let's just say this represents spheres. So what do we want to do with spheres? Well, if you remember from the diagram in the last video, we're going to need to simulate things with this is our physics representation, so we're going to need to do that. And we're also going to be able to... we're going to need to determine if these things are intersecting, because that's part of collision detection. When we detect collisions, we... well, a collision must have happened if things are intersecting. So we want a function that's going to allow us to determine if two spheres are intersecting. And that's what we're going to write here. So, for now, I'm going to make it return void. That is going to change, but for now it's going to be returning void. And I'm going to call this function intersect bounding sphere. And of course, it's going to take in a const bounding sphere reference that we're just going to call, I'll call it just other, just to be clear what, what's this and what's the other. And there. So, as I said, right now it's returning void. So what should this return? And there's a few things this can return. A basic thing it can return is boolean. Is this intersecting or is it not? But usually you want a little bit more information like that, such as where is it intersecting? Are the spheres just plain intersecting? Is it one contained within the other? Are they just completely outside each other? And you might want to know something like how far away are they from each other if they're not intersecting? So, I'm going to create another class for intersect data, 
And like before, I've created this off screen just to save us a little bit of video time. So I'm going to create a class called Intersect Data. And it's going to have, of course, public and private such. And for the time being, all I care about here is a, well, it's going to be constable, actually, for, I'm going to call it M O does intersect, sure. And I'm also going to have a const float I'm going to call m distance. And that's how this is going to work. And if, as before, I'm going to set up getters and setters off screen. Okay, so that completes our intersect data class for the time being. We're going to be adding to this and expanding to it later on in the series, but this will be enough to get us started. So, with that, let's go back to the bounding sphere. We're going to include our intersect data.h. And of course, our intersect bounding sphere is now going to return intersect data. And there. So finally, we can go ahead and implement this function in bounding sphere.cpp, which again, I went ahead and created off screen. So, intersect data, intersect bounding sphere, and of course, it's a member of bounding sphere, so I've got to put bounding sphere colon colon. And there. So, how do we determine if two spheres are intersecting? Well, let's put it this way. I'm going to have a float I'm going to call radius distance. And it's going to equal m radius plus other dot m radius. So if this sphere has a radius of 1 and the other has a radius of 1, then this is 2. Essentially, this distance is how far the centers will be away if the two spheres are touching. So that's, that's how you can think of it. I'm going to have another float I'm going to call center distance, which I'm going to get with other dot get center minus the center. And I'm going to, of course, put this in parentheses and get the vector length of this. So this right here represents how far away the, the two spheres, or the centers of the spheres, actually are. Whoops, sorry about that. Now, remember, if the center distance is equal to the radius distance, then the spheres are touching. So that means if the center distance is less than the radius distance, then therefore the spheres must be intersecting. So if center distance is less than radius distance, then I'm going to return intersect data with true. We are intersecting, and I'm going to return center distance minus radius distance. I believe that's right. I might actually have those parameters backwards, but we'll find out in a moment. And of course, otherwise, if that's not the case, then I'm going to return intersect data of false. And in this case, the distance is still going to be the same. And hopefully this illustrates the basic logic of how this works. The radius distance is, again, how far they are away if they're touching. If it's less than the distance where they're supposed to be touching, they must be intersecting. If it's further away than that, then they're not intersecting. It's it's a reasonably simple check. And I'm going to clean this method up, or, yeah, this method up in a little bit. But for now, let's just see how things are working out. So, I'm going to go to main.cpp. I'm going to get rid of all this. I'm just going to comment it out. You may or may not have something here, but I'm just going to get rid of what we have for now. And yeah, I'm not even going to scroll up there. This is temporary code, so I'm just going to go right here and include bounding sphere.h. And we're going to write some test code. And finally, to test our bounding sphere and intersect data classes, I set up a basic example with a few bounding spheres. I intersect them, and I print out the results. So if I build and run, I get these numbers, but a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's do this in an illustrative style. So we're testing sphere 1 against sphere 2. If I was drawing them, they'd look something like this. Sphere 1 would be right here, sphere 2 would be here. As you see, sphere 2 is up above sphere 1, and there's one unit between them. And as you can see here, sphere 2 not intersecting sphere 1, and there's one unit between them. So good, that's working. 
Sphere 1 and Spheres 3. Now this time, they're perfectly touching, but they're not intersecting. So, as you see, 0, not intersecting, and no distance between them, so that's working. Sphere 1 and Sphere 4, they are intersecting, as you see. And, as you see in the results, they are intersecting, so 1 there, and there's negative 1 distance between them. Now you might be wondering, what's up with the negative 1? In this case, that's the penetration distance. So, essentially the distance between this part of sphere 1 and this part of sphere 4. So, yeah, that distance, the penetration distance. And that is how that works. So with that, folks, I believe we have just about wrapped up this basic bounding sphere class. All I've done is I've made a last-minute change where I calculate a distance here with center distance minus radius distance, just to make it a little more clear that's what it is. And rather than doing if and else, I just returned an intersect data with the condition as the Boolean value. And there, it does the exact same thing. You don't need to do that if you don't want to, but I figured it's nice. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you in the next video, where... We'll take our physics engine just a little bit further than having a couple spheres laying around. Thank you. See you then.